we are God's House International Center. We are a parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We really welcome you, and it's such a joy to have you in the presence of God. When we are celebrating Christmas, we say you're very much welcome. There are also those who are watching us online, family watching us online. We, you are very much welcome. There are also some who may be new watching us online. If you want to get more information about us, please get in touch with the church during the Christmas period and the New Year period. We're going to be closed for, for a bit, but you can send us an email. As soon as we open, we'll be in touch with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just take time to wish someone Merry Christmas, someone you didn't come with, someone you who is not from the same house. Just take time to fellowship. Wish them a Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Merry Christmas to those who are watching us online. Merry Christmas to all those who are in the building. Merry Christmas from GHIC. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We really, we know, we don't assume, we don't think. We know the Prince of Peace who rule and reign in your homes. We know the presence of God. As you are opening, you know, different presents, we know that the, the greatest gift ever given to man is going to be with you, is going to be fellowshipping with you, who is Jesus Christ himself, the greatest gift given to men. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So just to let you know, our service, our Christmas service today is, is an unusual service. We are celebrating the birthday of Jesus Christ, number one. Number two, our service is going to be slightly shorter than our usual service uh, because we are very much aware that you want to go home, spend time with your families. You see, have some turkeys that you've left in the, in the oven, so you don't want to get back home and they are bent. So we're very much aware of that. So we're gonna, our service is going to be quite short today. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Can we, multimedia, could I please have Isaiah 9 verse 6, please? That's okay. I will use my phone and I will read to us. Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So we are celebrating the greatest gift ever given to man, which is Christmas, which is Jesus Christ. The fact that all the shops are closed, some people may not believe in Christmas, but they are acknowledging Christmas, they are acknowledging Christ. Does that not mean something to you? Let's appreciate our God. Praise the Lord. And it says... And the government shall be upon his shoulders. He is ruling and he's reigning, even though people may not acknowledge. The fact that shops are closed, he's ruling, he's reigning. And his government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We pray that you will experience that peace in your homes as you celebrate Christmas. Let's just pray for our service. And um, straight after, I will invite the worship team who will lead us into praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray for the service. What kind of service are you expecting in the presence of the Almighty, the greatest gift as we celebrate Christmas? Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, King of all kings, Lord of all, we have come to your house. We have come like those wise men that traveled. Father, we have traveled to come to your house to celebrate your birthday for unto us a child is given you are the greatest gift oh god given to us so father we honor that we have honored that by coming those who are watching they are honoring by watching online oh god so father we are so thankful for giving us jesus christ father we celebrate this morning oh god with humility oh god with understanding of what how much was was given to us oh god thank you oh god for ransoming oh god us oh god from our sins thank you for bankrupting heaven oh god for us in the mighty name of you are the greatest gift. As we worship, as we praise this morning, oh God, we pray that we'll sing, we'll worship with understanding, oh God. Father, may your name alone be glorified as we praise and worship this morning. Above all, we say glory and honor. We say Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. I now invite the worship team to come and minister this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is truly in this place. Hallelujah. This scripture that has been read now, I think for the fourth time already this morning, um, is one that actually the Lord laid on my heart and he actually reminded me that was the first memory verse I ever learned when I was about four years old. So this is, this is something, the presence of the Lord is truly here. So as we've just read it, we'll go straight into our time of praise and worship. And remember these words, the government of his, what does it say? The, of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Hallelujah. And it is the zeal of the Lord that will perform this. Praise the Lord glory to his holy name so this morning as we just worship him this is our offering this is our gift to the lord on his birthday on this merry christmas hallelujah so first of all merry christmas to you all it is such a pleasure to be in the house of the lord i love that analogy that karina just said that we are like the wise men who have come to the king himself and to offer our worship to offer our praise so see what you're offering to him as a gift this morning hallelujah Praise the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, King of Kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, holy night. Hallelujah. Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth.
worship the Lord offer him your own worship on this Christmas morning father we worship you we bless you oh God thank you for sending us your son thank you for giving us Jesus for unto us oh God a child is born and a son has been given and it is through your son Lord God that we today we are saved oh God it is through your son today Lord God that we can receive this peace that we can receive this joy that we can receive this love oh God to you be the glory and the honor Lord God to you be the praise hallelujah hallelujah and it says his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father Prince of Peace hallelujah his name is Jesus we call him Emmanuel God with us we thank you oh God what a beautiful name you have given us this morning that we can come through the name of Jesus and find all that we need oh Lord hallelujah you were the word at the beginning one way second verse says
Come on, give him, give him the praise. We worship you, Jesus. There's no name that can stand against you, Jesus. Give him the glory, give him the praise. He has no rival, he has no equal. Give him the praise. Let us magnify his holy name. We worship you, we give you the glory. You didn't want heaven without us. So you brought heaven down. Let us sing that part one more time. Oh, we can be heaven right here in this planet. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Oh Lord, my sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate? What could separate? What a wonderful name! What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name! Magnify the Lord in this place. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. That's why we say Merry Christmas. It's not about the turkey in the oven. It's about the turkey in your soul. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to the risen King. We are so glad. unifies us and make us one that binds us together by the blood of Jesus he was born to bring you and I together to make and you and me a family that can stand and magnify God what a beautiful name the name of Jesus he shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God Prince of peace 
and he is right here in our midst this morning why don't you turn to your neighbor and say aren't you glad he was born aren't you glad he came aren't you glad he was done hallelujah God is beautiful Merry Christmas church it's lovely to be here if we understood this this church will be packed up to the balcony just celebrating the beauty of this name that can unite everybody together the Bible says at the sound of that name the demons tremble at the sound of that name diseases flee what a beautiful name the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to your name father we bless you thank you for the gift that you so loved us and gave us your son you left heaven to come down so that we may partake of that grace we worship you this morning in Jesus name we pray come on take your seats church thank you worship team come on give it up for the worship team and the sound and the multimedia his sound is brilliant it's great it's wonderful thank you so much for coming we want to celebrate together before we go to celebrate as our families because it's a Sunday Sunday is the day of the Lord hallelujah welcome to church welcome to the house of God we are God's house international center a parish of the of the redeemed Christian Church of God but above all the church of the risen Christ that's who we are we want to go straight to the Word of God so that our service can finish and we can have more time together with our families amen is that okay there is somebody celebrating a birthday today please stand up and come and stand in front here we need to appreciate you if your birthday is today if your birthday is today we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year so you guys decided to come on the day Jesus came. Pastor Fatima, come, let's pray for them. It's a special day. It's a beautiful Christmas present. We pray that the heart of Christ will fill you, that the mind of Christ will fill you, that the joy of Christ will fill you, that each time you are celebrated, people will see the character and the nature of Jesus in you because you share this special day raise your hands heavenly father we thank you for your children as we celebrate christ we celebrate them yes. we lift them up to you father we pray that you bless them we pray that you keep them we pray that you grant them the desires of their hearts the cries that are there in the hearts that we don't know mighty god you do know we pray that you answer father let them see your truth and your grace preserve them until the appearing of christ we celebrate their lives when they were born. They are a gift to this church. Mighty God, may your hand be upon them. May your grace and your peace be upon their families. Save their loved ones. Because your word says, for us and our loved ones, we will save you. Mighty God, today make it be a special day for them as we continue to celebrate. Let blessings come their way. Let peace and good will come their way. Above all, fill them with your peace and your joy. We commend them to your grace in jesus name amen happy birthday god bless you amen day to you happy birthday to you May the good Lord bless. I can hear you, Iroro, from here. I will invite you to the worship team one day, just for one Sunday. May the good Lord bless. Hip, hip.
Hip, hip. Praise the Lord. So we, we, we are going to have a shortened service today. That's why I put it up to 11.30. Because if you put it for 11 o'clock, you don't know what will happen. Our prayer went 10 minutes in, but we want to finish before 11.30 so that you can go because our hearts are ready. It's now 12 or 14, 13 minutes to 11. So we'll finish very soon. One more time, smile to your neighbor and say, Merry Christmas. I'm glad he was born. I think I'm the gladdest of you all because I found my wife in Christ. If it was not for Christ, I was not going to fish her. So I fished her in the pond of Christ. Praise the Lord. I celebrate Christmas. I celebrate my wife. I celebrate all of you because God has made you our family. Imagine we spend most of our time with you than most of our families do. Because that's what Christ wanted us to do. Let's share quickly in the word of God. You know, it's a bit difficult to, 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 to preach about Christmas. Can I, can I come here? Because I, I want my wife to pull me when I'm, I'm, I'm passing the time. She's very good at that. Just drag me. You know, Christmas is special. But there is something I was thinking about to say, why did Jesus Christ came? In Luke, we are told that he was, he was sent to come and save us from our sins. But I noticed that he came and he went. And when he went, he says, I'm coming again. And then I'm thinking, so what do we do? So I titled my sermon today, The Past Versus the Future. So that we see where we are going, where we are. But I know in that that the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But there are events which are past. There are events that are coming in that person who is always relevant at any given time that we have. So when we celebrate Christmas, I want us not to miss out the future, which is the completion of why Jesus came in the first place as we celebrate his coming. That's why I say the past versus the future. Which one is greater? Is it the past or the future? Which one is more important? Is it the past or the future? Someone is saying the future. Someone is saying the future. Someone is saying both. What are you saying here? Both. 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 The future. Do you see? The future. So that, that's what we need to answer. They, they, they are important, but their weights are different. I feel what's more important is the future. Because that's where we are going. But the past is important in that it's foundational to how we live our present in preparation for the future. Do you see where we are going? So this is what we want to look at about Jesus. And then I want us to look at a few, a few quotes that can help us to understand and answer this and weight it properly and give it the right. The past is behind. We learn from it. The future is ahead. We prepare for it. So I love celebrating Christmas. What I've noticed is that there are more people in this country that celebrate Christmas than, though, than they believe, believe in Jesus. None of them believe in Christmas more than they believe in Jesus. Christmas was just the beginning of the process of the story. It was just the coming the confirmation and affirmation that there is work that God is doing. But that work will not be complete until Jesus Christ comes again the second time to take us to where we go. So the story of Christmas is to give us confidence that the promises of God are true. The story of the birth of Jesus is to give us confidence to believe in the promises of God. He promised many years that he shall come, he shall be born of a virgin, he shall be born in Bethlehem. He did come. 
And when Jesus came, he waited the prophecies by also confirming and affirming and promising himself to say, I am coming again. In other words, he gave weight to the prophecy to say, I am coming again. Now it's not the prophets who don't know me who are prophesying, but the thing itself, the deal itself. Now that I'm here, I will come again. I am going to prepare a place. Meanwhile, there is an assignment. While you celebrate my birth, there is a job for you to do. Because when I come, I'm not celebrating my birth. I am taking those who have understood my birth and done what they needed to do so that they can be together with me forever. How many ever saw Jesus in a manger? How many saw the wise men? But in the future, we are told we shall see him face to face. So the future is brighter. The future is critical for me. The future is important for me. I want to prepare for it. So that I can also see him like the wise men did. The wise men saw him as a, man, as a baby. I am going to see him as the Lord of Lords. I am going to see him as my priest who forgives me. So when we look at this, it's our opportunity to live our present. Believing that past and forming and fashioning our lives in a way that prepares us to the coming, second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why we say the future is ahead. We prepare for it. The present is here. So we leave the present in the light of the future that we are preparing for based on the understanding of that past. That's how we work with Jesus Christ. So when we do, we know that the assignment does not end on Christmas Day. There is further preparation that we do. This is what happened with the birth of Jesus Christ. That's why you were told he is coming again. That word again means there is a past that we need to believe that he did come. So the promise of coming again is real. We take it seriously. Let us not waste our present celebrating a past without an idea or preparation of the future. That's a big mistake. That's a big mistake. That's a big... Let us not put all our investments in a manger. Let us not put our investment in the little town of Bethlehem. The shepherds are lowing. I don't know who was lowing, whether it was the shepherds of the sheep, but it's the she lowing. But they will not going to be lowing again. So let us, let us use that as a foundation to step into the future. How many people ever dig down to their houses to inspect foundations when you live in? We don't. We celebrate the house. We extend it. We grow it through the birth of Jesus was the foundation to the eternity that he was carrying. So we prepare for the future. Let me go through this quickly. That's why Hebrews 9 Verse 28 tells us that Jesus is coming again. But when he comes again, he is not coming to deal with the sin anymore because he has dealt with it. He is now coming for judgment and reward. He is appearing for the second time for salvation to now check those that have been able to prepare and do what he wanted to have. That's why he is coming, because he has dealt with sin. He has given us how to deal with sin, how to preach, how to repent, how to uphold, how to be a light, how to share Jesus, how to be witnesses. Now he is coming back for salvation to take us back to where he is preparing according to John 14. So church, there is a preparation that Jesus is doing. There is a preparation that you ought to do as well. Jesus is not coming for the unprepared. We see the story of the ten virgins. They were not prepared. They were left. So if we don't prepare also, it doesn't matter how faithfully you celebrated Christmas. Christmas was just the stepping stone to give you permission to prepare for eternity. So let us not lose that in our time. 
Jesus came to set us free. He came to demonstrate a godly living so that we begin to live according to that. But then he gave us an assignment and he said, go into the world and show them a life with the gift of heaven. That's what we are supposed to be doing. But then he did promise, I'm coming back. John 14, I'm going to prepare a place, but I am coming back. And when I'm coming back, no one will be spitting on me. No one will be beating me up. No one will be giving me a cross to carry. I will come as Lord and King. I'm the one who decides what happens, who joins me, who does not join me. The future, my brothers, is the most important for us right now because that's the only way we are going. We will never go to the past. That's what David says in 2 Samuel 12, 23. You remember, his son died, and David was fasting, hoping his son would resurrect. But when he got a revelation of the future, he stood up, he began to eat. He says, oh, my son is already gone. He is not coming back, but I am the one that will be going to him. So he began to prepare for that life where he goes to join his son. So let us not lose sight of the preparation of the bigger event that Jesus came for. Amen, church. Amen, church. So we are moving forward as we celebrate. We want to know what God wants us to do. And when I was looking at this, I realized that there are more scriptures that talk about the second coming than those that talk about the birth of Jesus. So let's celebrate, but as wise and diligent in preparation for his second coming. Because he says, when I come, Revelations, my reward is with me. And I will reward every man according to their work. How many know that uh, putting Christmas lights is not part of the work that will be rewarded? But we do it to show what we mean. This is what, what Christ is in our hearts. When he shines, there is no darkness. He is beautiful. So what we do with this word, actually expressing the character and nature of Jesus, how beautiful he is, how glorious, how wonderful. It's an expression of the nature and character of Jesus. But what he wants is that beauty and transformation in our hearts. And when he comes, we should have dealt with sin in our hearts. Yeah, that's why he says, let not sin be found. Because we now believe what he says. And when he comes back, he wants to find a believing church. So in conclusion, church, let us invest in eternity. John 10.10, 10, the gift of Jesus is eternal life through salvation. That's the gift that Jesus came to us. The future is prepared for while the past is celebrated as a way of consolidating that preparation for the future the past strengthens our convictions to live the present in preparation for the future return of christ the future also will have a lot of tears because jesus christ tells us that when people realize that what he says was true and some people are, are remaining they shall be weeping there shall be gnashing of teeth. There shall be rubbing of gums. Whatever it is that you have in your mouth, there shall be some activity. But <laughs> there shall be some activity. That's why we need to get the whole package of Christmas so that those tears don't affect us. The future will be more painful for those who have not prepared. So celebrate with your eye in the future. The past is in your head, but the future is in your hands for you to work with. So Merry Christmas. May we be ready when Jesus comes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I finished at two minutes past 11. So if the service is late, it's not me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate yeah. Pastor Ossian. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor. You know, this is a reminder for all of us, you know, and it's true, especially in the United Kingdom, 
you know, you see towards the end of the year where, you know, time for Christmas, people are buying gifts. It's actually not necessarily that they are actually acknowledging Christ. They just celebrate. They like the festivity of Christmas. So we have heard, let's go and do business with this word. It's about the future. You know, Psalms 92 talks about, you know, how we should be taught how to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The past is gone. We have a future. The future starts now, and we can make a difference about where we are headed with Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. We can do better. Praise the Lord. So it's time for our giving. And the scripture that we are going to use today is Matthew 2, 11. And it says, And having come into the house, they found the child with his mother Mary. And having fallen down, they worshipped him. And having opened their treasures, they offered to him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. So this chapter, or this verse, is talking about the wise men. Praise the Lord. Any wise women in the house? Any wise men in the house? Praise the Lord. So it says, and having come into the house, have we not come into the house? We are in the house. And having found the child with his mother, Mary, we have been in the presence of God. We've experienced his presence. And it says, having fallen down, they worshipped. Have we not worshipped? We have worshipped. And now it's time for us to open our treasures and offer to him some gifts. What have you got to give this morning? You know, Christ, you know, God gave the greatest gift ever given to mankind, which is Christ. And it's time for you to open your gift. And don't give grudgingly. Um, it's not by compulsion. Give willingly. Praise the Lord. So our worship team will give us a wonderful song while we are preparing our offerings, our tithes, whatever you have, or building fund. Um, do that, please, cheerfully. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May we rise to our feet as we prepare to give, as we sing in celebration, joy to the world. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed by the word? What a word. Hallelujah. Celebrate with, an, with your eye on the future. Eish. <laughs> so let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we clap our hands? Oh, joy to the world. Let's pray for our giving. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, we thank you for the gift that was given to mankind. But as a token, O oh God, we are coming to you, O oh God, 
with what you have even given to us, oh God. Sub uh, the substance you've given us, oh God. We say, Father, receive this, oh God, and on this day of your birthday, as we celebrate like the wise men and women, oh God, we are bringing our, 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 our gifts, oh God. May they, be may they be acceptable before you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. There may be some who may have wanted to give this money, but are neighbor, oh God. Father, we pray that you will make ways and means that they will be able to give also, oh God. And that which has been given, oh God, Father, we pray, oh God, that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom because that's the reason why you came. You said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. May that be used to further your kingdom, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, King of all kings. We bless you even for the opportunity you have given us to gather this morning to fellowship, to worship, and to come and present our gifts before you. May your name continually be glorified. May our giving not end in this building as we continue, Father, to open our presence, oh God, as we continue, Father, to fellowship with our families, oh God. May we continue to remember the gift because you gave, may we remember to continue to give, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will now invite Pastor Fatima to the stage. Mom, you're welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, we just want to rise on our feet as we are concluding our service. It's lovely to see all of you. I saw Elijah singing, ah, going for it. I said, there is the future. Our boys, our mighty men, they are singing to the Lord on Christmas Day. They are not starting with PlayStation. They will play after. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for coming. And I know we are ready with different things that we are saving. How many people are still going to eat rice today? You are still eating rice? Ah, so do you eat rice every day? You are eating it again? Ah, how many people are still eating uh, chicken today? You see, this is this chicken. How many people are eating something they don't normally eat? Aha, clever is for adventurous people. Praise the Lord. And how many people are having shle already? How many people are having drybina? Uh -uh, today is not a day of drybina. I know there are some houses, it's going to be water. How many people are having three meal? Because you, you have already, how many have done their starters already? Our starters are done. We are just starting with starters. And how many people have already got their puddings ready for them? Praise the Lord. So as we are eating all these things, it's because of the beauty of Jesus. We pray that we will serve our food with joy, sharing the love of Jesus. How many of you, you met your spouse in, in the Lord? Like, like me. You see, Pastor B wants to jump even. Because of Jesus, we have our husbands. We have wives because of Jesus. And how many of you, you got a job after you prayed? The Lord provided a job for you. How many of you have children? The Lord opened your wombs. Ah, you have a womb, Pastor? Oh, I see. Praise the Lord. So all of us have received something because of Christmas. So let's go and give thanks for what we have received. Shall we share grace? Remember to save love, save patience. Save forgiveness, save understanding. That's the greatest menu we can give each other, that which money cannot buy. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.